Chapter 39 Mummy, are you all right? Will you come tuck me into bed, Mummy? Prince John asked plaintively. He held out his arms. Somehow, Marion found her voice. Sorry, my son, she managed to say. I've got to go. Mummy, no! Don't leave me! Mummy! Prince John wailed, his voice louder. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door, followed by a voice. Is everything all right, sire? I heard someone talking. Marion froze. froze. Oh, no! Sir Hiss! She shot a look at Cluck, the chicken beckoning frantically. It's all fine, Prince John assured him. Just talking to my mother's ghost. What? What are you talking about? The snake demanded. I'm coming in. Marion detected the turning of a key in the lock. In a moment, she'd be caught. She dove towards the hearth just as the bedroom door began to open. Her breath hitched. Would she make it in time, or would she be caught by Sir Hiss, who certainly wasn't going to believe her disguise? Suddenly, everything went dark. Cluck had smothered the fire. Blindly, Marion kept running in what she hoped was the direction of the fireplace, praying she wouldn't slam into a wall or trip over furniture on the way. Meanwhile, Prince John was still whining for his mother, and Sir Hiss was at the door, trying to figure out what was going on. Marion found the hearth. She pushed through the opening, then slid the door shut behind her, hoping the noise would go unnoticed in the commotion. Without a pause, she and Cluck ran down the corridor and ran down the stairs as fast as they could, not stopping until they reached the safety of Marion's room again. Marion collapsed onto the bed, yanking the veil off her head as she tucked in huge, sucked in huge breaths. Cluck sat down next to her, also winded. For a moment, they didn't speak. I can't believe it, Marion whispered once she'd found her voice again. Do you really think it's true that my uncle is still alive? That he's been here in the castle this whole time? I think so, Cluck said solemnly. Prince John would never lie to his mother if he told her Richard was alive. Well, I believe it. Marion sat up in bed. We have to go to him, she cried. But to her surprise, Cluck shook her head. No, she said, not now. Not when we have no idea what we're walking into. We don't know how many guards are stationed at this cell, and we don't know what John is telling his right now about what he just confessed to his supposed ghost mother. We can't risk our own lives, or Richard's, by acting hastily. Marion hung her head. She knew her attendant was right. But still, I can't bear thinking of him down there, she moaned. He's probably so scared and lonely. I can't believe I walked past him so many times and never known. Her voice choked on the last part. But now you do, Cluck reminded her. And because of that, we could do something. But we're, not, but we're going to need backup to ensure we succeed. We'll only get one shot at this. We must not fail. Marion's eyes widened. Robin, she breathed. We need to tell Robin. He will help us. I'm sure he will. Once he learned, learns his king is still alive, maybe his men will too. Cluck nodded in agreement. If anything will get them moving, it will be this. All right then, Marion said. We'll go to Robin at first light, and we'll stop by the abbey on the way too, to let Friar Tuck know the, uh, the news. This way, if anything happens to us, he'll be able to tell her story to the others. She smiled a little. She couldn't help it. She knew things were still bad, really, really bad. But her uncle was alive. That was what mattered. Maybe, just maybe, she could save the kingdom yet.